We're here at Low Web uh, with Fabrice Grenda, uh, angel investors and serial entrepreneurs. And for our series of interview of Silicon students highlighting challenges, entrepreneurial challenges, and the thought process of overcoming those challenges. So thank you for joining us, Fabrice. Thank you for having me. And uh, first of all, can you tell us really briefly a little bit more about yourself, uh, what you do? Sure. So I'm actually French. Um, I actually uh, graduated from high school in France in Nice, and then I went to Princeton in the U.S. And then I worked for McKinsey and Company for a few years. And then, 15 eight years ago, I started uh, building internet companies. I first built an eBay uh, for France. Then I built a big mobile content company in the U.S. Turned from zero to 200 million revenues. In the last eight years, I've been building an, a Craigslist type site, classified site for the rest of the world, especially in the emerging markets in India, Brazil, Pakistan. Uh, Portugal and pretty much all of Africa and Latin America and at night I've been an angel investor and I'm an angel investor in 120 startups. Okay and can you so you've had a lot of entrepreneurial ventures can you tell us uh, a moment of really hard challenge that you had to to go through uh, in your career? So what, probably the biggest challenge I faced was when I created my second company Zingy and the early days everything was challenging. Um, it was 2001 and the environment had completely changed, the bubble had burst and I, I wanted to raise money for the company, couldn't raise a single penny because uh, I would call venture capitalists and tell them I'm doing this B2C telecom idea. All the B2C companies had failed, all the telecom companies had failed, so I mean like Webvan, MCI Worldcom, eToys, Pets.com, etc. So I couldn't raise any money. Uh, then I wanted to get music licenses to sell ringtones or create ringtones from them and the music companies didn't want to give me licenses so I started like violating all the licenses uh, but I started I, I kept accounting of it and 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 started sending checks but I was um, so they in a way I, I tried to prevent pretend we had an implicit contract but I was getting these cease and desist letters and people saying they were gonna sue me for hundreds of millions of dollars because the fee for a copyright infringement is like two hundred fifty thousand dollar per download um, and, and the carriers, the phone companies, which are very big, didn't want to talk to a tiny startup with no money and so couldn't get any deals done. And it took forever to get things done. And, and little by little, you know, invested uh, the money I had and ended up investing, frankly, every last penny I had to the point that I started missing payroll. I couldn't pay rent anymore. Um, I had personal rent, office rent. You know, I, I couldn't afford food, so I started living off ramen noodles uh, and um, miss, missed payroll for four and a half months in a row. We went from 27 employees to seven because, yeah. you know, when you stop paying people, they stop showing up for work. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I know, funny that. Yeah. But but in so doing, we laid the foundations of our success. We'd actually uh, ultimately ended up signing and getting all the licenses with the, the with the music companies. We started convincing the phone companies work with us. It took two and a half years to get the first deal, yeah. but finally we got that first deal. And finally, on August 15 of 2003, about four and a half months after I stopped paying payroll, etc., yeah. the first check for the first carry we'd signed was just Sprint arrived. And it was like $548,000 and it was like liberation. And we, we paid back all the debt. We became profitable and then we grew from profits. And then the company went from a million in sales in, in 02, 5 million in 03, most of it at the end of 03. 50 million in 04 and 200 million in 05. And I ended up selling that company successfully for 80 million in cash in May of 04. So, it, but we were that close to yeah. bankruptcy so many times, especially in the first two years yeah, where so I didn't have any more money or anything. That's a happy ending with a lot of, of a struggle. So in this type of situation, so you have, you try to convince a lot of people, you hear a lot of no, you have people threatening you to, uh, to sue you. Uh, you have people, employee who are uh, really like, uh, just like quit How, what's what's the hardest thing or maybe everything is hard but what would you say like what was the most challenging part of this all this moment no i, I don't know what i mean the entire circumstances yeah. are, are challenging i think what's important is just to keep faith that yeah. things if you work really hard yeah. and if you're doing something that you believe in things are going to turn out all right and yeah. to me it was obvious that this was it, it was bound to happen yeah. um mobile content had become very big already in asia yeah. and it had become very big in europe it was just a question of time when the u.s uh uh, phone companies would realize it and the music companies would realize it and and i was i felt i was the best position to make it happen and so it was like 
grit, tenacity, and like never willing to let go or take no for an answer. And and it, it, at some point it becomes funny because I had like hundreds of like season desist letters. So at some point, you know, one more, one less doesn't change anything. And I got rejected by every single VC I talked to. Yeah. So again, one more, one less, you know, it doesn't yeah. change anything. At some point, you, it doesn't bother you anymore. Like, you know, I expect the no before I even get there. Yeah. And, and, and so it's just keeping faith that what you're doing is the right thing yeah. and that you know how to do it. And, and in our case, it was clear that it was what the market and the, and needed at that time. Yeah. And so, you know, it wasn't all that hard. Like, I mean, it's the, the circumstances were hard, but it's not a, as though I ever lost self-belief or, or that this was a great idea or, uh, or frankly, even a good idea. And so it's, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, to the extent you have faith and, and passion in what you do, it's just gritting it out. Like, you know, bear it and, you know, put your head down and keep working and things will work out. Okay. And, and about the, the employees who stay, the seven, how, how do you keep them motivated? How, because I understand that the people leave they're not paid anymore but the one who stay how do you keep them motivated to 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 succeed well to be honest we we were so busy we didn't have time to even think yeah. uh, because by the time we I saw making payroll we had actually signed the first carrier and because the carriers are li they're like sheep once one was live and it was working they all decided to sign so at that time and actually signed all of the carriers and we had implement yeah. so we were coding like I because we had lost like all our employees I became a coder again or project manager and we all started working uh, day and night we were just executing so there's no there's no like point to take stock as like okay what's going on or yeah. think through things you're bad it's like we're so busy because there's more work and fewer people yeah. we were just Working, 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 and things took care of themselves. Okay, great. So to, to end, like, would you recommend something to young aspiring entrepreneurs who face a difficult situation and basically you don't know what to do, you, you're kind of scared, you freak out, what would you recommend them to, to tackle this type of situation? I mean, look, the reality is you, you always face negativity. I mean, wh when I created Auckland, people told me it was a stupid idea. Auctions would never work in France. You know, in France, uh, we don't have this beanie baby collectibles culture. We, in France, there was, the internet was not going to even work. There was Minitel. Who needs the internet, you know? And no one's going to be crazy enough to put their credit card online. Or when I created Zingy, same thing. It's like, oh, it's these crazy Europeans. They'll buy games for their cell phones. You know, we Americans, who only use or cell phones or work. I mean, ridiculous thoughts like that. To the extent you have self belief, I think, you know, don't let things stick, stick to you and, or get to you and just keep, as long as you have a clear plan and anything that things that you're doing make sense, just keep going at it and keep trying. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I don't mind if I get rejected by VCs a thousand times. I just need one yes. Yeah. So I keep throwing it at the wall until something sticks. And usually you try hard enough and you end up making your own luck and something and does end up sticking. Great. Thank you, Fabrice. Thank you for this great story. And uh, good luck for your next uh, ventures. Thank you. Thank you.